Hi, we're the Fine Brothers. Grab your Snoopy doll and take some notes because good grief. We're about to jump through the entire history of Peanuts. You'll be all caught up and informed about the comic strip and its characters in time for the Peanuts movie coming out November 6th after watching this recap in one take in under five minutes. Starting. Wow. Peanuts creator Charles M. Schultz was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota on November 26, 1922. His connection to the comics began when his uncle gave him the nickname Sparky, named after the horse spark plug in the comic strip Barney Google. New decade! In 1937, Schultz drew a picture of his dog Spike and sent it to Ripley's Believe It or Not, and it appeared on its syndicated panel. New decade! In 1943, Schultz was drafted into the U.S. Army. After his service, he focused on developing his career in comics until he could do it full-time. His big break came in the summer of 1947, placing a weekly feature called Little Folks in his hometown paper, the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Many Peanuts origins come from this strip, including a dog named Rover that looked a lot like Snoopy. A boy very serious about his musical studies, similar to Schroeder. And a character named Charlie Brown. New decade! After nearly three years of publication, Pioneer Press dropped Little Folks in January 1950. Schultz didn't give up on the strip, and in late 1950, he approached the United Feature Syndicate. They decided the name Little Folks was too close to the names of two other comics at the time and changed it to Peanuts. Wait, that means Schultz didn't choose the name Peanuts? Mind blown! The first Peanuts comic strip debuts on October 2nd, 1950, and it's the first time Charlie Brown is called Good Old Charlie Brown, along with the appearances of Shermie and Patty. More iconic characters and events happen, like the appearance of Snoopy, who resembles Social's childhood dog Spike, even though it wasn't a beagle. And we finally see Charlie Brown with his signature zigzag shirt. And welcome aboard, Violet and Schroeder. In August, Charlie Brown is first called a blockhead, and three months later falls for the football gag, with Violet pulling the football away from him. In 1952, the first licensed product was a reprinted strip book called Peanuts. Kodak then featured Peanuts characters in their camera instruction booklet in one of the hottest models that they had at the time, the Brownie. And Hey there, Lucy. Welcome to Peanuts. Six months later, Linus Van Pelt makes his first appearance. In November of 1952, Lucy finally pulls a football and falls in love with Schroeder. Soon after, we get Pigpen. In 1959, Lucy opens her psychiatric booth. Best nickel I've ever spent. Sally also gets introduced, as well as the first mention of the Great Pumpkin by Linus. We believe you, Linus. He is real. New decade. Welcome to the 60s. This brought us bell bottoms, the moon landing, and automobiles like the Ford Falcon, which featured the Peanuts characters in its commercial. Hallmark Jordan Safarian introduces the Peanuts gang into their greeting cards for the first time. Fast forward to today, Hallmark is a partner on the new Peanuts movie. Back to the past. Big news is revealed officially that Snoopy is a beagle, as stated in a strip on December 5th, 1960, when Charlie Brown called him one. In 1961, Charlie Brown's biggest crush and future heartbreak, the little red-haired girl, is first mentioned. The inspiration for her was Donna Johnson Wall, the co-worker of Schultz at the Art Instruction School. And in 1964, the National Cartoonist Society named him Outstanding Cartoonist of the Year. He already gave him the same award in 1955, making him the first recipient to receive it twice. No big deal. In 1965, Peanuts first came to movies and television with the Emmy winning a Charlie Brown Christmas. It was watched in over 15 million households and is still shown every year since to this day. In fact, this year, 2015, is the 50th anniversary of the special. This led to the first theatrical feature, A Boy Named Charlie Brown, which focuses on Charlie Brown's attempt to win the National Spelling Bee. Welcome the Peanuts, Peppermint Patty. Peanuts' march to all media continued in March 1967 with a Broadway show called You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, which had over 1,500 performances. And a month later, we first meet Snoopy's sidekick. Woodstock isn't called by his name until 1970. However, birds resembling him had appeared for years throughout the strip. Then in 1968, with the boom of the Civil Rights Movement, the strip made a big move, introducing the first African-American character, Franklin. Also big was a Snoopy balloon that made its first appearance during the 1968 Macy's Thanksgiving Giving parade. New decade! Here come the 70s, the era of disco, afros, and brings us Marcy along with the coolest character in the former Snoopy's alter ego, Joe Cool. In 1973, the Emmy winning a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving debut. New decade! Where both Fine Brothers will be born and grow up to love Peanuts to the TV series, The Charlie Brown and Snoopy Show! By the 80s, Peanuts was already published in many different languages around the world. It even broke into the Japanese market. It became huge there with the help of Hallmark and Determined Productions, who released popular Peanuts branded puzzles, dolls, and more. Determined also began to contact famous fashion fashion designers around the world. They worked on specially designed outfits for the plush dolls of Snoopy and Belle, his Parisian sister, a wee wee. Displaying these dolls became a huge event traveling all over the world called Snoopy and Belle in fashion. And the dolls are still touring to this day. Back to the past. By 1984, Peanuts is seen in a record breaking 2,000 newspapers around the world. This is America, Charlie Brown debuts. It becomes TV's first animated miniseries. Two decades. It's the 1990s. And it starts with the celebration of Peanuts 40th anniversary during the Super Bowl 24 halftime show. 1990 also brought our favorite Peanut short, Why Charlie Brown Why, which deals with the gang befriending a girl with cancer. Meanwhile, overseas, Peanuts was being showered with love as well. Schultz was honored by the French Ministry of Culture with the Order of Arts and Letters in Paris in 1990. 1992, the Italian Minister of Culture awarded the Order of Merit to Schultz, who also met Italian director Federico Fellini. The original drawing that Schultz ended up drawing for him is now in the Fellini Museum. Back in the U.S., Schultz got his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The 90s also brought many of the major characters' last appearances in the comic strip, including Patty, Violet, Pigpen, Schroeder, and Franklin. Schultz officially retired on December 14, 1999, after writing 17,897 strips. That's a strip a day for over 50 years. Good grief. New decade. A new decade brings sorrow, as on February 12, 2000, just one day before his final Peanuts comic strip with the last appearance of Charlie Brown and Snoopy was released,
released, Charles Schultz passed away. Just over eight months after Schultz's passing, Peanuts celebrates its 50th anniversary. The Charles M. Schultz Museum and Research Center opens on August 17, 2002 in Santa Rosa, California, and contains many of the original Peanuts strips along with tributes to Schultz from other artists. And here we are now in October 2015. We could not be more honored to be part of the 65th anniversary of Peanuts and the release of the new film, The Peanuts Movie, celebrating the work of one of the greatest cartoonists of all time, without whom we might not even be making videos due to all the influence his work had in our career. And now you're all caught up on the history of Peanuts. Who's your favorite character? What's your favorite quote from the comic strip? Would you let Charlie Brown kick the football? Will you be watching the Peanuts movie on November 6, 2015? We know we'll be! Da 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 da